It's recording. Come on, come on, come on in tight. Come on in. You can, you can see me as you get into the sun. Come on. All right, congratulations to Braxton from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Uh, T-shirt winner coming to Europe on 806. Now, I know that disappoints some of you guys, but I'm also going to be drawing a second name because Braxton will not be bringing anyone with him. So I'm going to pick somebody else as long as I, I've covered the one spot. If somebody else wants to pay for their flight, I'll bring you out too. And you can shag up with Braxton. When I say shag up, I don't mean in like the Austin Power sense. I mean you can shack up and that you're staying in the same room together in separate beds. Now, today we're going to talk about the AMG. Why are we talking about the AMG? Because I just caught a renter taking it on the racetrack. And that's a big no-no where I come from. It's, it's not only a big no-no, but it makes you my least favorite customer and it makes you get banned from the company. Because when you take a car on a track, do I allow that? Yes, if you tell me you're taking a car on a track and pay for the track use and get the proper insurance so that we're covered, everything is good. But uh, I caught the guy on the racetrack. He was, um, obviously you could see from the tires, that's, that's obvious stuff. You look at the car and some of you guys are gonna be like, whatever, he brought it to the track, there's no damage on the car. There's still a problem because track use does a lot of stuff to a car that a regular rental doesn't do. Now, this was an, an obscure rental to begin with because the guy was renting a car for one day and he wanted 500 miles on it, right? 500 miles, that's a lot of driving in one day. Where are you headed? Yeah, just upstate a little bit. Okay, no big deal. Maybe the guy wants to drive to like Niagara Falls and back. And when I started to check in the GPS, because it's a one day rental to see if he was actually gonna make it back in time, uh, it was like, wait, where'd this guy go? Did he put 500 miles on it? So I'm starting to look at the GPS and I zoomed in. And once I zoomed in, it, it was pretty obvious what happened. And I was too late to catch him. Now we have two GPS units in every car. We have one um, that's, that's buried in the dash, which is a pain in the butt to get to which I generally sell a bunch of the cars, just disconnect the account and sell it with that in there because it's a pain in the butt to get out. Another one that's more e easily accessible. If somebody disconnects one of the GPSs, I now am alerted that the GPS has been disconnected, but you know, redundancy is good because I want to protect my assets. And the second one, if it gets disconnected, boom, you got the cops on you in a matter of minutes because that means you're up to no good. You're either looking to do something you're not supposed to be doing with the car or you're trying to steal the car, which is why we have the backups. Now, track use on a car, what it does, you, um, you can cook the fluids. There's a bunch of stuff that, that can happen with track use. Now, what I usually do if somebody's taking a car to a track, I will bring it to a dealership, have the car prepped and ready for the track, which means the fluids are checked, the brakes are checked, everything is checked so that if something happens, the car was in perfect mechanical order. Once the car comes back, it then goes back to the dealership and gets reinspected. A lot of manufacturers now will allow you to keep your warranty if you track the car as long as you get it inspected afterwards. I'm concerned about losing my warranty. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm concerned about losing my warranty with track use, which is why you get it inspected before and after. Covers me, covers the renter. They pay significantly more than the one day rate. Um, we've rented a Ferrari 430 to Chevy for a couple of days when they shipped it down to Road Atlanta and tested it for three full days. They replaced the brakes, the carbon ceramic brakes, they replaced the tires, they flushed all the fluids. They were doing this when they were designing the C6 Z06, so, or 01 maybe, I forget which one it was. But that's what happens with track use. Track use, it's, it's, you're not paying for that wear and tear. Now if you look here at the tires, you could see, obviously the marbling is a, a clear indicator that the car was on the track because, and you could say, well, I could do this on the street. Not, not to this extent. And you may remember, I bought these tires like literally 10 days ago. And then you get this, this uneven wear now on the tires and that there's sort of ridges here because you're rolling over the tire so much. Even when the guy came back and we called him out and said, look, we know you had it on the track. He's like, he didn't know how we knew, but he's like, oh, just a couple of parade laps. This guy wasn't doing parade laps. He did probably, 75 50 to 75 laps at new york safety track now my gps's are programmed pocono watkins glen all these tracks that are in the area are are zoned out in my gps and if you get too close to one of the tracks it'll shut down and disable the car as soon as you turn it off and people would always call up and be like hey uh, i'm at the track and i'm just i'll look up i'm like there's no nascar race right now so what are you doing up there oh no i was just coming to watch the event and then they drive it back that's usually the no harm no foul i get it alerted to when they're at the tracks this one was new york safety track 
I didn't know about New York Safety Track. I didn't think to add it to the system. Guess what? Now it's in our system and it's on our radar. But uh, what happens now? Customer tracks the car. I think our contract says we could charge him $10,000 for like abuse. And I'm, I'm not looking to do that to the guy. There is no ignorance that you can claim when you sign a contract. You can't go to court and be like, oh, I just didn't read that part where I initialed next to I can't bring it on a racetrack. This guy was deceptive from the beginning. He didn't say he was taking it on the racetrack. He knew he was taking it on the racetrack. He tried to hide that fact by just saying he was driving upstate. Went, beat the balls off of it. And that really puts us at a risk and him at a risk. There's no insurance for this car at the racetrack unless you get a specific policy that covers it. And he did not do that. There was no insurance. If this guy crashed the car, I would have to end up suing this guy because not even my insurance policy is gonna cover that use, which is really like the biggest thing you could do. You're, you're sort of risking both my insurance, my asset for your kicks, and that's not cool. So what do I do now? I'm gonna charge the customer. Uh, he's gonna put new tires on the car. I'm gonna have the brakes checked. I'm gonna have the fluids flushed. I'm gonna do a full post-track inspection at the dealership. Look for over revs. Uh, make sure the warranty is not voided. If he did anything like that, I'm suing him. Uh, because if I have a car that's supposed to be warranted that's no longer warranted, that's a big problem. The over revs, if, if somebody runs a, uh, an over rev report and on the street you don't get the over revs, or you may once in a blue moon, but at the track there's a much bigger chance that you're going to see over revs. And when I try to sell the car, if they look at the, the report, like a DME report from the Porsche, let's say there's like 23 uh, range three over revs, my car is worth significantly less. I'm checking all of that. I'm going to make sure this car is good ready to go for the next customer. We're bringing it right over to the dealership now. The least favorite thing you can do as a customer, the, the only thing you can really do, I don't get annoyed. You can jump the Grand Canyon as long as you tell me and your insurance is willing to pay for it. But the second you try to deceive me and take a car to a racetrack, it's when things go to shit. This guy and the other guy who rented it, both drivers are now blacklisted from my company. Um, and it sucks. It's, I, I mean, it's not hard it is pretty hard to sneak one of these past me. I don't see any immediate rock chips on the window. There's a lot of dead bugs on it. We'll get that checked out. The scrubbing on the tires here isn't because we picked it up at the track. He then drove this car back like 150 miles and there's still that scrubbing on the tires. So we're doing a full check on this car. I don't know if it went off track, didn't go off track. I don't know what the deal is, but we'll get it over to the dealership, get it checked out. Big no-no, don't do that. If you want to rent a car for the track, be honest with the, the company they're renting from. They're either going to say yes or no, but you're not going to put yourself in a situation where, where I'm now in with this customer, where I have to charge him for the inspection, uh, the tires, and just to make the car as it was before he took it to the track, which I don't know what it'll cost, a couple of grand. But that sucks. Uh, don't do that. You don't want to be deceptive. And there's no, there's no practical reason to do that. You want to be a stand-up person at the end of the day. It's hard to tell people to be stand-up people, but you don't want to deceive somebody because all you're saying is, I don't care about this guy or this company. I want to pay a fraction of what it should cost to do this because somebody else will just pay for it. Or maybe the car will break on the next guy and he'll have to deal with it. That's not cool. I don't like that. And that is a big no-no in my world. That's like the one guy that annoys me. Thank you for watching. I'll let you know how this turns out. See you tomorrow. For those of you not familiar with my other company, I started a company called Adventure Drives, which combines driving and bucket list travel. It's a lot of fun. Our next trip, we're off to Europe in July. If you're interested, Prices can be done per person. It's don't worry. If you don't have somebody to go with you, we can match you up with somebody. You can check the link in the description for adventuredrives.com and sign up today.